dear, glad to have you join us on the Supadec Weekly. As you know, every week we bring to you the activities of Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission. And in this episode, this week, we are bringing the efforts of the agency in housing development for oil bearing communities. It is an interesting package uh, considering the importance of housing as a basic necessity of man. Come with us and see what the SOPADEC has been doing so far. Joy Uchi is mining. The purpose of an oil producing commission is for the people of the oil producing area. My message to the oil producing community is that any project that is done in their area, they should see it as their personal project. They should see it as community project. They should defend the project the way they defend their king. That is my message to the people of the oil producing community. Housing, described as shelter, is one of the three cardinal necessities of man under Maslow's hierarchy of need. Food, shelter, and clothing are the most compelling of human needs. The Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, the SOPADEC, has since inception worked hard to address the challenges of housing in oil bearing communities. We can confidently recall that after the worry ethnic crisis of the late 90s, the SOPADEC embarked on the construction of housing units in the most affected communities to cover up for the houses lost to the unrest and also to further solve the predominant constraint of housing deficit among the people. To ascertain the level of efforts made so far by the Commission in the housing sector, our crew had a special session with the head, Department of Housing, the SOPADEC, Mr. William Oyimi. He said the department plays a significant role, beginning from project design to preparation of the bill of quantity, introduction of sites to contractors, supervision, evaluation and completion. We are basically into um, uh, construction of uh, uh, housing projects. And uh, housing projects, I mean schools, hospitals, public libraries, talk of uh, civic centers, we talk of event centers, anything that has to cover a human, uh, a human dwelling. That's basically what we provide here. And what are our duties and responsibilities? Our duties and responsibilities are uh, spans in a lot of ways. We go to these various communities to design, to prepare first preliminary designs in terms of cost. When we do a preliminary design, we send it to the commission for, for them to vet the design before a final design is made. So when a final design is made, we now prepare the bill of quantity, what we call uh, a bill, BOQ. When we prepare the bill of quantities, and uh, the designs, then we package all those drawings with the final uh, total estimated cost and hand it over to the, to the board. The board in turn give it to various departments. Between that period, uh, the contractor also have to go to site to assess what is tendering for, then the tendering process. While the contractor is executing the project, we in, as department, from time to time, in collaboration with other departments, visit the site to know that, to, to make sure that the contractor is working in accordance with our design specifications. We'll go to site and make evaluations, then we pay contractors until the project is completed. At the moment the project is completed, we take over to the, from the contractor and write to my boss, which is my immediate boss, which is the director of project in the person of Barista. Uh, than a Mayuku, then in my boss, boss will now in turn inform the managing director and his team they will commission the project. Mr. Yimi said the SOPADEC has invested much in providing shelter to oil bearing communities, citing as examples 
Vogoro in Wari North local government area and Okarenkoko in Wari South. According to Yemi, beneficiaries of these housing projects are joyful and appreciative of what the SOPADEC is doing in their various communities. We have built new towns. Of course, one of it is uh, uh, in Warino, where we built about uh, 24 housing units for Tonlola and Oboro in Warino. We built at one stretch, not these ones we built at isolated communities. At one stretch, we built 24 housing units in Otonola, 12 in Otonola, and 12 in Oboro. And what is this uh, 24 housing unit? These are semi-detached buildings. The communities are happy. Of course, recently we commissioned a project at Naifo. We have teachers living there. They don't have any problem of going to worry to stay. None of them are coming to worry or to go to Asaba or near Ugeli to stay. They are staying there. The school is full to the brain. The primary and the secondary school is full to the brain. The teachers have no complaint to travel out of, the, to, of their station. And of course, the parents are comfortable. In all facets of uh, the teachers are very, very much happy. Our crew also toured the housing projects in Ndokwa Access and met the member representing the Ndokwa ethnic nationality on the board of the SOPADIC, Honorable Ikechuku Akozo. He disclosed that the commission has helped the people of his mandate area with the provision of houses. Because of our setting, rural setting, like I said before, teachers, coppers, uh, the principal, most times they don't stay. So as much as possible, we want to provide facilities for them that will encourage them to stay and teach and do their job. That is why we go into Copper's Lodge. So when Copper's come, they will have a comfortable place to stay. The principal equally will have a very comfortable accommodation. And uh, just to enhance their job. Aside the development of a modern structure house in the Ashaka Police Station and the construction of three bedroom bungalow at Agbo Grammar School, the Sopadek has also built doctors and nurses' quarters at the Tagbuno Health Center. In Isoko land, Housing development by the SOPADEC is also very visible. The board member representing the Isoko ethnic nationality, Dr. Paul Owe, said the intervention in the housing sector is impressive. Not too long ago, we commissioned a hostel, a student's hostel in the engineering campus of the, the only campus of the Delta State University. It's a very beautiful one. The governor himself came and commissioned it. It's part of our intervention, and that, I can tell you, has been very helpful to the students of uh, the only campus of Delta State uh, University. They're happy for it, I can, I can assure you. Uh, also there, in that same campus, we put up a four-block, um, you know, fully furnished apartments for visiting lecturers. I can also tell you that we have also um, four blocks, you know, uh, of quarters for doctors and nurses at Avera General Hospital. It's a very good intervention, you know, um, in order to uh, improve the capacity of these health uh, operators there to, to attend to our people. And we also have a principal quarter built um, at the, the Uzere Grammar School. Of course, obviously, when you have uh, the head of the school being on ground, uh, discipline will improve, teaching will improve. I think it's a, it, it's a very good intervention. So in housing sector, we've not done badly either. Recently, the governor of Delta State, Dr. Ifanyi Okowa, was at the Delta State University Ole Campus to commission two major housing projects, namely the lecturer's guest house and the engineering student's hostel. 
I want to yet again congratulate the Super Deck and commend them for this project that they put in place at the Ole Campus of Delta State University. I believe that you helped to solve one of the very, very challenging problems that they have in this campus. So I want to thank you for assisting the university to put up these buildings for visiting lecturers. I want to commend the SuperDeck and to congratulate the university administration for this project. Coming to Urobo land, the SuperDeck has built housing estates, corpus lodge, as well as the construction of teacher's quarters, all to meet the needs of the people. The two commissioners representing the Urobos in the SuperDeck, Chief Kent Okiemute and Chief Vincent Oyibude, attest to the efforts of the Commission in housing development. Another housing project is just for only coppers, not based on community use. It's just coppers. It will, it will provide the coppers shelter so that those that the, those that the coppers, the, the authorities sent to Agbaroto Ibu's College, they can have a place to rest their head. Instead of for them to be flying from Ugele to Ibu's College. Then the one of Ireke is to remove our people from the, gla from the ga gas flaring area. Because if you visit that site, it's not good that you stay near fire because of fire outbreak. I think if if we put that project in use, it will help them, at least provide a shelter for them. The Supertech have been tapping. In the, in the schools, there are a lot of building ongoing on in terms of uh, construction of uh, school classroom building, construction of a hostel building, construction of uh, labor laboratory, you know, building. These are all housing units. Earlier, our crew had visited the palace of the Okobaro of Ugeme Kingdom to get the views of the monarch. Yeah, prior to the construction of this palace, I was at what we now call as the old palace. Uh, it's one structure palace. But the flood of 2012, you know, impacted on the area so much so that we find it difficult to uh, come into the palace. It is in this pain that is the state government saw the need to address the pain, and it is that. Uh, thinking that reasoning and wisdom that they put in place this palace far much more better than what we had before. This whole palace as it is now was a project of the Sopadek. The structures you have here, they are all constructed by the Sopadek. Even to defense, it was a wonderful, uh, humane effort by the agency to address the pain, the pain of um, our people, my people, which of course myself at the point in time. Speaking on the Corpus Lodge in Ibru College, Agbaroto, the principal of the school said it will create comfort, boost security, and conducive atmosphere for teaching. It will motivate the coppers to work. And of course, if the coppers are doing their work, it will also help to upgrade the teaching learning process. As the principal of the school, I'm grateful to the commission for counting it uh, necessary, the SOPADEC, to remember this uh, community and this school in particular in their projects. I appreciate them. Still within the access of the rubber mandate area, the SOPADEC has acquired renovated and furnished a secretariat complex for both the national and the delta state chapter of the host communities of nigeria producing oil and gas postcom speaking with the sopadek weekly 
the Hostcom Chairman, Delta State Chapter, Evangelist Gabriel Isibelu, applauds the SOPADIC, saying that the Secretariat has attracted to them good identity, recognition and credibility to all their activities. Hostcom is a national organization that cut across nine states. Today, this is our state secretariat. It also houses the national secretariat. As a group, this bill has given us credibility. What I mean by credibility is when the federal government wants to deal with you, they want to know your identity. Are these people real? The Minister of Niger that they have come here took pictures. They saw for themselves. Minister of Petroleum, they have done the same. The Office of the National Security Advisor, they have done the same to verify how genuine we are. So they know we have credibility. If as a pressure group, we are provided resources and we bought this BD is up to this standard, which means we can also manage resources. So to us, this BD has enhanced our credibility and it has given us a sense of responsibility before the community and the public in general. Also speaking is the Delta State Secretary of Hostcom, Dr. Joshua O.J. According to him, the SOPADEC intervention has given them an enabling office environment to diligently carry out their duties. Indeed, the SOPADEC has been very helpful to Hostcom in Delta State. They gave us funds to acquire this place. They also gave us funds to furnish this place. And in furnishing this place, we have about six flats here. Most of the communities under the Ijo mandate area are riverine in nature. The cost of erecting a building in this part of the world is more capital intensive compared to the upland. Against all odds, the Sopadic, according to the board member representing the Ijo's, Dr. Paul Bevin Mebo, has made spirited efforts to provide houses in the difficult terrain. Housing is one of the basic uh, needs of uh, mankind, apart from food and, uh, and clothing. Uh, so uh, the Sopatec has uh, done so much in that area, uh, particularly my mandate area, which is a, a riverine area. It's very difficult for, for you to erect success in that uh, riverine area. But uh, the commission has taken the, the bull by the horn and uh, has been doing a great job in that uh, respect. Um, uh, recently, the federal, uh, the uh, Nigerian Maritime University that established in Okanekoko, the commission saw a need to intervene in the aspect of um, uh, providing staff quarter for the school, which of course uh, was commissioned uh, early this year and uh, is being put into use and uh, the people are really enjoying uh, that facility. Uh, even before then, we've done a teacher's quarter in Okanekoko. Um, in fact, a lot of uh, housing projects have been uh, dotted around my mandate area. Uh, housing, as we know that is very fundamental to human uh, existence, uh, is one key area that we'll continue to to look into and also provide uh, for the people. The SOPADEC has constructed one unit of two bedroom bungalow at Fogbeni and Uregbeni respectively. At occurring Koko Federated Community, the SOPADEC has done four units of two bedroom bungalow house in the state as a residential apartment for teachers and health workers. Housing was very poor. Housing was very poor because we were staying in six female in one room at times, just one room, and it wasn't easy. We were coping, even some of us we even slept in classroom in this location. It's town halls before this place was built. We are covering it, it's covering it. There is lights, telly, everything. We can get information now. I appreciate the present government of Okowa and the SOPADEC for constructing this building. Also in Okarenkoku, the SOPADEC has completed four semi-detached two-bedroom bungalow for senior lecturers of the Nigerian Maritime University, Okarenkoku. This project has since been commissioned and handed over to the university community. 
the guest hall is a good one. Um, it has been done. It's a, it's a usual uh, way they have been doing it. One provided for the second primary school before this one, Lord Devil one has been provided. So they are working effectively well. I really appreciate the um, the management of Superdeck, the chairman, and all the working, all the management team for this laudable project and laudable um, you know, work, work doing in uh, Delta State. At Eluwe Primary School, Odimodi community, the construction of teachers' quarters is ongoing, while at uh, Nifugbene, the agency has completed doctors' and teachers' quarters. There are also Corpus Lodge at Okokunu Secondary School and teachers' quarters at the community primary school. The construction of the palace of the Pere of Simberi Kingdom and a police station at Okokunu are ongoing, courtesy of the Sopadek. Dr. Paul Bebe Nimibo highlights some of the benefits of the projects to the people of his mandate area. One good thing about uh, the Superdeck projects uh, is that immediately when the project is completed, it has to be commissioned and put into use. Uh, I will make bold uh, to say that uh, my own father is a beneficiary of uh, the Superdeck uh, housing presently in Okanaboko. And uh, uh, the building is there and he has been uh, in that building for the past uh, five or six years. And some other uh, communities too. Those uh, structures are there and uh, the people are enjoying it. So uh, the impact is, uh, is clear, uh, it's, it's there for people to see. It's not something that uh, one will, uh, uh, will say, will not just be, begin to just say, but it is there to be used. So it has, uh, it has uh, positively impacted on our people. The Ishekiri people has also benefited immensely from the housing development programs of the Sopadek. At Uberju Grammar School in Wari South Local Government Area, the Commission has constructed a befitting lodge to accommodate a large number of National Youth Service Corps NYSC members fostered to the community. The Soap Paddock has built five units of two bedroom bungalows Sato Budu also in Wari South. At Omadino, 11 units of two bedroom bungalows have been constructed. At Ifekburu community, the Sopadek has also addressed the challenges of housing deficits to a reasonable extent with the construction of 11 units of two bedrooms at Twin Bangalos. This house, since the Sopadek built this house for a more than seven years now, they don't build this house. So, and since then, I'm the first occupant in this premises where the Sopadek built for years ago. And since that time, we have been living where you so, since we believe we were here and the use as we discovered the before, we so release we leave many things for away for this time here. Most, most of people say that they pay school fees before, we they, they run as strange race for months, every month won't end before. So, all those things not different away again. So, it can make me say, I really appreciate what the government do. The government is the support, so what they call do, do for our community here. So, so I really appreciate that. So, and all those things say, can make people, God bless the people, say they face stress, they're not going to face stress again. At Uboguru and Otonila, 24 units of cluster houses and 12 units of two bedroom bungalows have been made available by the Sopadek. It has also constructed and furnished a befitting accommodation facility for the health workers in Uboguru Cottage Hospital. The staff quarter is very, very comfortable in the sense that you have everything in there. You don't get to come out. Maybe you want to cool, you want to get water, you want to go and cook and all that. Unlike other lodges or compound uh, flats in this place, it's very, very comfortable and it's very, very close to the clinic. You can easily assess the clinic at any time of the day. <laughs> The housing program by the Sopadek in the oil-bearing communities is intended not just to provide shelter, but also to generate income for the well-being of the people. A broad impact of the interventionist agency in the lives of the people of oil-bearing communities in Delta. That's our package today. Thank you very much for being a part of it. Until we come next week, 
you can follow us like share and comment on our social media handles on your television screen sending your questions suggestions and contributions on how that so paddock can continue to build a stronger delta join us next week when we come on behalf of the entire crew joy uchi is my name